I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. Uh, we have been polluting the earth for years and uh, we might actually die in a few years. Our world is already in flames. It's getting hotter. We can't breathe. We are here because our parents trashed the planet and it's up to our generation to save it. And like so many people my age, I feel really visceral anxiety about climate change. Call us Generation Z, the last letter of the alphabet, because we are going to be the last generation to survive. My conscience couldn't handle the idea of bringing someone into a dying world. I'm angry because this planet is dying and the president of the biggest country in the world refuses to acknowledge that. And I'm sick of the people that think we are not serious. For the people who are suffering and dying because of our country's decision. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. Our oceans are choking with trash. And the sixth mass extinction is well underway. We do not have time to be polite. This is a revolution. It doesn't matter how much we're taxed if we don't have an earth to live on. We need to do more instead of having a corrupt president who won't acknowledge that the earth is literally dying. This is environmental racism and we must acknowledge the issue. We need to listen to our children because they totally get it. Because every day of inaction drives more action from us! At this point, I actually hope they're telling the truth. They have actually managed to make me excited for the world to end and for all of us to die. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. I'm gonna talk at you for a minute about the channel, just a few announcements before we dive in here, but I will put a timestamp on screen for where you can skip to if you don't wanna hear the announcements, you just wanna hear the news. So, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes right now. I told you that we had big plans for breaking 100,000 subscribers, which, by the way, uh, thank you all so much for that. This is the casual 100,000 subscriber video. We take a break from the suits because it gets kind of toasty, but we'll wear a hoodie. That's like just the right amount of toasty. But I started doing this and I set a goal for myself, which I thought at the time was too optimistic, which was 10,000 in six months I wanted to break. But here we are now, less than a year, we broke 100,000. It's absolutely insane to me and I could not have done it without you guys. And I know that's the cliche like, oh, I want to thank everyone. I couldn't have done it without you. But I'm serious. If you weren't all subscribed and supporting the channel, we wouldn't have broken 100,000 subscribers. So I literally could not have done this without you, but also the other stuff that you guys did, which I appreciate beyond comprehension, emailing me, commenting, messaging me support, that was really the best part of it because YouTube demonetizes all of my videos. If you wanna know how much I make, I'll tell you, I've done the math. I make about 71 cents per every thousand views I get. And so there's so much more that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see. It's a lot of work. And so I've been doing this full time, living off savings I had, and you guys kept messaging me like, hey, where's your Patreon? Where's your PayPal? I want to portrait I just kept saying like no I appreciate it I want to go broke before I accept your support because it's not about the money it is about the message you know I've had offers from companies like hey just mention our product we'll give you this amount hey partner with our platform put your content behind a paywall no I refuse and so that actually segues nicely into the plans for the future so basically and I'm gonna wrap this up quickly so we can talk about the news on October 10th which is the one year anniversary of the channel. We're launching a website that's going to act as a network for you and I to interact and also for all of you to interact with each other. We're gonna be doing live shows, exclusive content. We're bringing back the monthly mailbag. Uh, we'll have weekly book recommendations. You guys can vote on video ideas or submit your own ideas. There's gonna be a newsletter. So a lot of big stuff happening. We're very excited for it. And then um, also when the long awaited, much requested Heck Off Kami fall merchandise line is dropping. And so then, you know, we get closer to October 10th. You guys will see previous views of it. I'll probably show some of it in a video because I'm only making so much and then once it sells out, it's going to be gone because I want it to be special. You know, I don't want to be the guy that just always has a t-shirt available. No, no, no. I want to create cool and unique designs for you guys and then make a certain amount so it's like a one-time only thing so it stays personalized. And so that's what we're doing. Also, we're doing a giveaway. We're giving away two laptops that are identical to the iconic Heck Off Kami laptop. So all you have to do is either follow me on Twitter or Instagram 
or both bonus points for both. And then we're going to randomly select one follower from each. And so if you're following me on both, your chances are doubled. And then we'll send you a brand new laptop with the signature heck off commie stickers on it. And I'll even attach a note explaining all of them in case you're curious, maybe you're not, whatever, have your laptop. Also the Minecraft let's play. Here's what we're going to do. A lot of people have been asking for a Minecraft let's play. And a lot of people have been asking for a Q and a, so we're going to do, uh, we're going to drop a Minecraft let's play on October 10th, during which I answer any questions that you guys might have. So leave all your questions commented on this video and I'll go through all of them starting with the ones that have the most likes so yeah ask me anything in the comments and we'll answer that while playing Minecraft epically and uh, last thing coincidentally a few different schools all in the Midwest have all reached out to me inviting me to come speak in November so I was thinking why not just make a tour out of it so if you're attending schools in any Midwest state and your organization wants to host a speaking event in the week it's no the week of November 11th send me an email send me a DM let me know which organization you're affiliated with and then we can see if we can set something up um, and so that should be very epic very excited about these plans but now we will talk about what we're less excited for which is having to listen to these incessant children and I have to be careful here because uh, since they're children, YouTube is just waiting to come down on me for harassing them. So we're going to walk on eggshells here to some degree. Not going to specify who we're talking about. And let me stress, I don't actually believe anything I'm about to say. I'm a satirist. This show is satire. My audience knows that. We're a satirical news show that aims to make fun of American conservatives. And I'm actually from Sweden, too. So please don't shut me down. But if you do, I will see you in court because you didn't do a damn thing about people harassing the Covington kids on your platform. So... Anyways, it's funny because watching all these kids, you know, yell at us, I have to admit, because I'm at a weird age right now, I'm 19, and so I'm watching this, and then the kid is, me, the kid in me is like, hey, we disagree, but good on you for fighting for your beliefs, don't let the grown-ups control you, but then the adult in me is saying like, shut the hell up, you little twerp, who even are you? Stop being truant, go back to school, some European chick is going to tell me I can't eat meat anymore because I'm taking her future away from her. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. As if this isn't the greatest thing that's ever happened to her, as if being being used as a puppet by the international left isn't literally the greatest thing for someone like her. She's in the international spotlight. She's won what's referred to as the alternative Nobel Peace Prize. She'll never have a problem getting into a prestigious and pretentious university, getting a job at some leftist think tank. She is literally set for the rest of her life because of what she's doing right now, which is, whether it be in good faith or bad faith, being used by the international left to indoctrinate people into supporting their agenda. They do this with gun control. They do this with immigration. Now they're doing this with environmentalism which we've already talked about what that really is. But interestingly enough, they couldn't care less about the issue, which decidedly has the greatest negative effect on children, which is abortion. In fact, they champion abortion. In their eyes, abortion access is their greatest achievement. And because of that, you don't have to listen to them condescendingly lecture you about the children. They don't give a damn about the children. They give a damn about political power. If they cared about the children, they'd want the parents of those children to be armed. If they cared about the children, I don't know, maybe they'd enforce their immigration laws to stop violent criminals from killing the children. They'd, I don't know, maybe at least be a bit more in the middle you know, with abortion access, but no, 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 no. You can kill it up until the moment it's born. And some in the intellectual community have actually rationalized infanticide, which is killing a baby after it's born up until months afterwards, totally fine because it has no right to life. And the people are dumb enough to just buy into it. They're too dumb to understand that these are calculated moves. Why don't they have scientists talking? Why is it children? Why would they choose to have children speak about this issue? Because it works. And it's funny because it works for Western countries, but it's not going to work anywhere else. We in the West are living so comfortably, largely because of our history with fossil fuels. And now that we've become wealthier, we've been able to innovate to use different types of energy more efficiently. So now we're actually leading the world and reducing carbon emissions, largely thanks to natural gas. But anyways, we're comfortable enough now to where we can actually care about this type of stuff. Do you think people in China care at all about what she's saying? China being the largest emitter of CO2? They don't. Take a look at what they were saying online about her. They think that she is an ignorant pawn. Do you think China, whose economy is dependent on their use of fossil fuels, particularly coal, you really think they're going to stop and say, you know what, she's right. Just, just pack it up, boys. No, because they have to feed themselves and their families. Same thing with the Middle Eastern countries. You really think they care about carbon emissions? No, they are not comfortable enough to care about carbon emissions yet. But us wealthy Western countries, we could probably be persuaded into lowering our carbon emissions, which is what we've already been doing. Our emissions are actually at their lowest point in the last decade or so, I'm pretty sure. So no, I don't really know what this hype is all about. Aren't we already doing all we can to solve the problem? No, 
because we need the government to get involved and pass something like a Green New Deal. And again, we've already talked about that. We've already talked about how this whole thing is just a Trojan horse for socialism, and these kids are at the forefront of it. They're acting as the sirens. You know, they lure you in, and then, oh no, your freedom is gone. Oh no, your economy's crippled. But hey, at least you cared about the kids because of your weird guilt. And it's actually very sad because these kids are being brainwashed into allocating their youthful energy, right, into the wrong causes. These white liberals have no meaning in their lives, so they're pledging their support into environmentalism because they believe it's their great struggle. They literally believe that it's their World War II. And they're infatuated with this idea of the human race going extinct because they see no point to us being here. They're nihilists. Environmentalism is the religion of the elite. They've got their prophets. They've got their doomsday prophecy. They've got their ceremonies. They've got their holidays for which their kids can miss school. They've got their lifestyle template. Don't drive to work, don't fly, don't eat meat. Yeah, don't eat meat. Become a nice, weak, impotent little beta male. Lower your testosterone, lose your drive so you can just say, okay, yeah, I guess we do need a Green New Deal. <laughs> I'm fine with eating bugs for dinner. And these kids are being indoctrinated by these types of things. But also in the educational system. I mean, I had to watch on two separate occasions at least, An Inconvenient Truth, that Al Gore movie. And so now you've got nearly 30% of voters that believe that it's at least somewhat likely that the earth will become uninhabitable and humanity will be wiped out over the next 10 to 15 years. Half, 50% of voters under 35 believe it's likely that we're on the edge of extinction. So you've got them indoctrinated and you've also got them to where they have no idea what any other standard of living is. So regardless of the fact that on net carbon emissions have been positive for humanity, they fail to understand that in order to implement the policies for which the left is advocating, we're going to end our hundreds of years of economic growth and bring about economic devastation. China emits twice as much CO2 as we do, but hey, we'll ignore that. Hey, maybe we could get off coal if you let us have natural gas and nuclear power. Nope, only solar, only wind. Yeah, good luck with that pipe dream. She even admits in her speech, she says, we're in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you could talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. She admits it. No, we're not in the beginning of a mass extinction. Even the most extreme climate alarmists don't claim that, but she's being open about it. She's slowly bringing up the fact that in order to prevent the world from ending, we're going to have to cripple our economy. Never mind what the Middle East is doing. Never mind what Asia and Africa are doing. We have to cripple our economy. We have to stop having kids. Oh wait, we have less kids. Better mass import young people from the third world. We have to stop eating meat and start eating bugs. We have to stop driving cars. We have to stop flying planes. Yeah, no thanks. You're a pawn. You're just a cog in the wheel. And if it weren't you, it'd be somebody else. You're not unique. You're just filling the shoes that they've showed you how to fill and you're selling out your country for it. And my country too, because the people that we have here that are just like you. Ignorant, self right just entitled NPCs that would rather regurgitate socialist and pseudoscientific talking points for their own gain while playing the victim as if creating the most prosperous society in the history of the world. Access to unprecedented levels of food, clean water, comfort, technology. That was really such a disservice to you? You want to stand on the shoulders of giants and spit down at them as if you're better? As if you would have done better? Have some humility, you child. If they wanted someone who knew what the hell they were talking about, they'd have brought in a panel of scientists, but that's not what they really wanted. They wanted someone who would cry crocodile tears and make everyone with a sub 110 IQ feel guilty about driving their car and eating steak. And that's why you're there. Not because you know anything. You're not there because you're credible. You're not even there because you're a good speaker. You are there because you're a young face that they know will manipulate the emotions of people watching so that they can support the cause. And I hope being worshipped by overly nurtured millennials in their mid 30s who still receive money from mom and dad. I hope that was worth selling out for. I hope that being used to promote an agenda that whether or not you know about it or whether or not you even care will cripple millions of families and make our country and our freedoms vulnerable. I hope that was worth it for you. Hey guys, if you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe, comment, comment questions. That's right, comment the questions and I'm going to keep referring people back to this video and this is just gonna be the storage place for all the questions and then when we do the Minecraft Let's Play, the epic Minecraft Let's Play, this will be where we get the questions from. So thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Ka-chow.